Welcome back to another how-to video on troubleshooting relays. I'm George Merchant. I'm with Electronic Control Services. I'm the owner. I uh, have been doing this for quite a while and today we're just going to try to quickly go through. We'll try to keep this video short so uh, if you're out there trying to figure out what you're doing, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a relay on a car or a relay in a system. Um, of course uh, we're mostly uh, dedicated to industrial and automation systems. So that's what our focus is, but these same principles apply whether you're talking about something in a car or something in a plant. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it here. So I went ahead and I drew out a circuit, just a simple latching circuit right here for you guys. And I've got just a stop and start switch. And I'll go ahead and come over here and kind of circle for you. So here's my stop switch. Go ahead and full screen now for you guys. There's my stop switch. There's my start switch. There's my relay coil. And this is my relay contact. Okay, this is just, you know, simple ladder diagram. Doesn't matter whether we're dealing with 24 volts or 120 volts, whether we're dealing with 12 volts, it's all the same. So taking a look at that right there, that's just a simple latching circuit. And this is how we use a relay in that circuit. So let's break down what a relay is real quick and what that thing looks like for you. Here's just a simple relay. I like these relays because they, they light up and I got a nice little indicator on there for you, right there. Let me use my pencil line there. And it also has like a, a little, little tiny orange flag that also appears and it has a manual operator as well as a lock-in where it'll actually lock it in place. Not all relays have the, not all relays have any of this stuff, so. Sometimes they might have an indicator, sometimes they don't. But that's not the important parts of it. The basic components of it, and you can you can see this real easy right there, is you have a coil. All that is, is just a copper winding. There you go. That's just a copper winding right there for you. So you guys can get a good look at that. Oh, too much light. All right. And then you have, if you look very closely, we'll try to get a good picture for you right there. That right there is your contacts. And when the relay gets energized, that contact moves. See that? See, and if you look closely, you can see that metal plate right there gets pulled over. I'm using the manual operator, but if I was applying voltage, it gets pulled in and it switches its position. Okay? So this relay, like most, and just about all relays, have a normally open and a normally closed contact on that okay so the normally open contact means no power passes through that the normally closed means power is always passing through that okay or it's always true so there's a third leg of that circuit and that's your common that's where your voltage actually comes in so you'll have it coming in and then one of these on uh, will be normally open and one will be normally closed okay and then you have your coil voltage, okay? So typically referred to as the A1 and A2 of the coil, okay? If we look at our, our circuit again, I'll, that was my drawing, I'll pull it up on the screen here for you. There's your coil and there's a contact. And this contact could be anywhere on a circuit. It could be all different places, but one side of it, we'll just say this is zero volts and we'll just say this side over here is 24 volts. So 24 volts comes into the A1 and the A2 goes on its reference or zero voltage, okay? This is not called common, none of these are called common, okay? This would be called the common, and common can be any voltage. It's just the common point of the contact, okay? That's the switched voltage. So you could take this out, this contact, and this actually could switch a whole different voltage. That's important to remember. Um, relays are oftentimes used to isolate between two different voltage. You may have a control voltage, and in the case of like a motor contactor, you may have 24 volt DC and it may switch on and it turns on a motor that's actually 480 volt three phase power. So the contact is not necessarily electrically connected in the same circuit as the coil. So that's important to remember. So how do we troubleshoot this thing? Let's get down to the brass tacks. I don't take too much time explaining it. All right, very simply. So when we have a relay like such it's actually not very difficult to figure out whether this thing is good or bad 
and what you're going to be doing is is you're really going to be doing this with the power on okay warning make sure that you're careful follow all safety procedures don't get hurt out there uh, 24 volt DC is relatively safe um, so you don't have uh, too much don't ground it out it'll still weld melt metal um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our drawing again and we're just going to walk through that real fast and then we also have our handy dandy meter okay so how you're going to do this when you are troubleshooting is is you're going to take your meter and you're going to take it to voltage okay so if you're in an AC circuit like say it's 120 volts you're going to go with the little sine wave little squeezing line voltage or if it's a DC like you're doing with 24 volt DC you're going to go with the straight line straight in the dotted line and that right there is going to go ahead and give you what you need to measure okay uh, I'll also be putting up other videos on meter usage um, as well as other tips and tricks so let's just move along here all right pull this up real quick all right so what I want to do first is I want to make sure that voltage is getting to my coil because many times the coil is not bad nothing's actually wrong with it or anything it's just that it's not coming on because something else in the circuit say you know your stop button start button something like that something else is not allowing voltage to actually pass to it okay so in this case if we were doing this we would have to press on the start button to properly test to see if voltage was getting there okay so let's go ahead and switch on over to our relay and there we go I'll move that up so you can see a little bit I got my a1 and my a2 okay so with one of my meter leads okay and, and I would be checking for voltage okay I'm gonna assume a wire is coming in here and then with my other meter lead I'm gonna to go to reference so the reference for 24 volt DC would be zero volts okay so if we were to take a look at our picture here I'd basically be checking here and here okay but in the real world of course so I would be just checking here and here okay and what I'm looking for there is I'm looking for like if this was 24 it'd be 24 volt DC I'd be looking to see 24 volts or something very close to that if it was 12 volt DC I'd be looking to see 12 volt if it was 120 AC I'd be looking to see 120 AC and that's what I'm going to be doing I'm going to be looking and seeing and making sure that I'm getting voltage to the coil okay so if I've got voltage to the coil and the coil's coming on well my coil is okay but if I've got voltage coming to the coil and it's not coming on, I don't have an indicator, it's not pulling in, it's not changing state at all, then I've got a problem most likely in my coil. Ever so often though, you will get damage in the base and the connection points in the base might melt, just ran into this the other day, might melt and it no longer makes good contact or doesn't make contact at all. That does happen, but basically you know you've got a problem in your coil or your base in that case. And most of the time, just swapping out a coil sometime, or, or a, a relay, sometimes you can swap it out with a nearby one just to test it real fast, and then, boom, you found your problem. You're moving on. Okay. So now the next part about testing a relay is to test your contact. Okay. So your contact, going back to your picture real quick, your contact right here in this circuit. See how it's labeled R1 and R1? They've got the same level, same label, but different symbol. Relay, contact. Coil, contact. Normally open contact. Makes sense, right? So uh, in that case, what I, I would be doing is, is I'd be looking and seeing what voltage am I using, right? What voltage am I using? And which side am I, I going to? So if I've got my incoming voltage, so we'll just assume we're still 24 volt DC. I would be going 24 volt DC and my reference is zero. So if I've got if I've got a if this goes to zero like it does in my picture, you can kind of see my picture in the background. Okay, on the other side of that coil, I can just check it right here actually because I got a good reference point just sitting right there, right? And I talk I'll talk about reference points in another video. And that right there, and I say okay, I've got voltage going there. If I don't have voltage going there, then this isn't my problem. I've got it's not going there for some reason okay now then I'm what I'm going to do is while still keeping by reference what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here and I'm now I'm looking at my normally open and normally closed okay 
depending on you know which how the how it's wired you know we can just basically kind of see where it's wired and I can go ahead and I can check that I can say okay all right it's passing power it's not passing power my contact right pull that up my contact right here is closing properly or not now sometimes these contacts get dirty and arced up because over time no matter what the voltage is you have small arcs as they open and close all all electrical components all electromechanical components are going to do this you're always going to have every single time every single time that thing opens and closes when it's when it's got any load at all on it it's it's going to do little tiny arcs in there it builds up carbon it doesn't land so smoothly anymore and if you get too much of a voltage drop it won't power the next device properly you won't be able to get the the amp draw needed to turn on that device and, and make it work properly. So if you've got a large voltage drop, you say you're 24 and you're getting 18, then you've got a problem in your contact. You measure on one side, your incoming side, and oh, I got it backwards. There you go. You measure on your incoming side and you got nice solid 24 volts, but coming out the other side, you got like 18 volts or something like that. You know, even 20 volts is really that's that's a very large drop. You can do the same thing with 120. So you got 120 here, but on this other side you've got 105 or something like that. And so, yeah, you're you've got a nice decent voltage drop there. So you know you got a contact going bad on you. Guys, that's pretty much it about uh, troubleshooting a relay. And um, hopefully uh, you guys can tune in. Uh, we've got classes. I'd love it if um, you could check out our website. Uh, it's uh, www.improvemaintenance.com, and uh, links will be in the description. Uh, you guys can subscribe for uh, more how-to videos, and uh, we'd love to uh, help uh, uh, teach the uh, next generation of technicians or maybe some old techs help them sharpen their skills. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, please like and subscribe.